This is Siaya District Hospital in rural western Kenya, and it serves over 120,000 patients a year. Like Valerie, most of them are young children seeking treatment for malaria, one of the leading preventable causes of death in the world. The child has got malaria. It's positive for malaria parasites. It's currently in severe fever distress. We see this many times every day. Many times every day. I would say at least twice daily. Malaria is transmitted by mosquitoes and has existed for thousands of years. Its most virulent strains are found in sub-Saharan Africa. 1 to 2.7 million people die because of malaria every year. And 90% of these deaths are in children less than 5 years of age in sub-Saharan Africa. Malaria is a cause as well as an effect of poverty. In areas where malaria is endemic, economic output is reduced by almost one third compared to countries where we don't have malaria. So it affects disproportionately the poor people. Malaria is both preventable and treatable. Public education, anti-malarial drugs, and the use of insecticide-treated bed nets are effective approaches. But in sub-Saharan Africa, many families simply cannot access these critical tools. And recently, several strains of malaria have become resistant to existing medications really wondering why it was so hard to get families to spend 50 shillings, that's uh, 60 cents, on a bed net. How could that not be possible? And then when you see how people really struggle for health matters and for school fees, and you realize that for some that 50 shillings is just too much. There are also fears of emergence of parasites that are resistant to the drugs that you're using. We need additional tools to the existing tools for prevention of malaria. Back at CIA District Hospital, Valerie's red blood cell count has plummeted in just a few hours. She is in need of an immediate blood transfusion, but in rural clinics like this one, supplies are not always available. With the current state of affairs, well, prognosis is bad. We are bound to lose, although we are hopeful that the child will stay with us. Now, for the first time ever, there is new hope in the fight against malaria. Participants in the International Malaria Vaccination Initiative, funded largely by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, conducted second phase testing of a malaria vaccine. Early results from six African countries have indicated a 50% efficacy rate. One thing to remember about this vaccine is that the early studies showed it prevented 50% of severe disease. But because we're talking about malaria, which kills a million children every year, 50% is something we think is worth taking forward. And that 50% should save tens of thousands of lives. The vaccine will reduce the burden of disease within the community. People will not miss going to their fields because they're sick of malaria. It will also improve the economy of the country because a huge budget of the Ministry of Health is spent on treating and prevention of malaria. If the phase three trial is successful, the vaccine could be integrated into a regular vaccination regimen as early as 2015. This is really a very hopeful time for malaria control right now. This renewed interest from the international community and from ministries of health in Africa, I think we really are going to see some major inroads in the fight against malaria in the next five, ten years.